please. I have a new witness, one that will change everything. Your Honor, this man is a doctor. Let him testify. Let Order. him tell you what really happened to Annie's baby. Order in the please. courtroom. Your Honor, you must hear this new testimony. I must do nothing of the sort, Mr. Lewis. It's the surprise Honor. witness I told you about. What this is is sheer histrionics. No, Mr. no, I just found this man. I don't believe I was addressing you, Mr. Your Lewis. Honor, in the interest of having justice served. Not presume to tell me about What's wrong? justice. What's wrong? Another witness, Annie. Anything else I don't know? This is not a free-for-all. Court is still in session. Be quiet. Both attorneys, front and center. Mr. Marmer, Mr. Williams, get up here. Uh, Josh, Josh, don't do this. It's done. No, please, please, please. I can explain everything. I bet you can. No, you have to listen to me. I'm all ears, Annie. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's your cover story this time? You know something? It better damn well be a good one. New York City, Cape Cod, Newport, Rhode Island. That's a great day out there, Jenna. What the hell is this? I'm sorry? Well, you will be if you don't have a bloody good explanation. This is our travel schedule. What's wrong with it? Oh, what's wrong with it is that I thought that we were going straight to Europe. We are. Oh, are we, Cape Cod? Are we yachting over? <laughs> we're going to take the roundabout route. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, Boston, New York, I would say so. Yeah, well, don't forget Newport. Summers can be very profitable there. What are you talking about? Charity parties, huge bashes for the very rich, very famous, very robbable. And you came up with this whole plan without consulting me? I wanted to surprise you. I was just trying to rekindle our marriage the way it began. Well, you thought wrong. Besides, you bought too many tickets. What do you mean? There are three tickets here. For you, me, and Coop. Well, no, Coop's not going. He's staying here. No, 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 no. No, oh, no, no, no. He's staying here with his father. Absolutely not. Oh, you don't have much to say about this. Coop Free? is part of our family. He stays part of the family, period. Over my dead body. Dad. Dad, would you slow down a little bit? If I slow down, I won't finish my work. Well, we're not going to be busy again. Look, before. I got a lot of work to do. You got a problem with that? No, I don't have a problem with that. The problem with something else, what's, what's the story? The only story I want to know about is the one you're filling in for Lanny. No, I'm talking yeah. about the story about you and Jenna. Could you put a flame under the chili, please? What's going on with you guys? There's nothing going on with us guys. There is no buzz in Jenna. There is a buzz in Coop. That's the end of the story. Don't hand me that ball. She was crazy about you and ditto you with her. Well, the dittos are all off now. Why? Please, tell me what's going on. I mean, I was never a huge Jenna fan, but the woman seemed to make you so happy. Do you know what didn't make me happy? Finding her in bed with Jeffrey. That didn't make me happy. stories. No. You lied to everyone. You lied to me. No. Even when I offered you a chance to finally tell the truth. No. When I was willing to help you help yourself, you turned me down. No, no. You told me you were holding back nothing. You told me you were telling the complete truth. You told me that with a straight face, you, Annie. You don't understand. No. You are wrong. You are terribly wrong because I do understand perfectly. And I have one last thing to say to you. Someone's going to get burned as the world turns. So go ahead, lose your cool this summer on CBS. So, what you were saying about finding Jenna and Jeffrey together, Dad. Hmm. 
Does that mean what I think it means? Bingo. Now, let's drop it. No, no. Oh, Harley, Harley, come on. You know what? Call me wacky here, but this timeline doesn't make any sense to me. Look, Officer Wacky, there is no investigation and no one's going to press charges. Yeah, well, why not? But what's that supposed to mean? You said, you said that Jeffrey was a criminal, right? Well, he's no choir boy. Well, Jen didn't want to be married to him anymore. She, she wanted to start a life over with, with you and Coop. That was obvious to everybody the night of your birthday. I, I... Would you hand me that sponge? Just... Help me, help me make the jump here. What jump? The jump that takes me from, from Jenna being so crazy in love with you to being in bed with Jeffrey and, and Coop living here. Okay, a little life lesson for you. First impressions are generally right on the money, and yours were about her. The leopard didn't change her spots, probably because she couldn't. She said she wanted... White picket fences and a guy in an apron bringing the bacon home and cooking it. But that isn't what she wanted. That wasn't her dream. I wasn't her dream. You're 100% sure of that? I am so sure it's my last word on the subject. Dad, I'll... Damn it, don't bring it up again! I may have had to give up on my white picket fence, but I'm not giving up on my son. I absolutely agree. No argument. Good. That's why I want Coop to be with us, but I don't understand why you don't. Jeffrey, haven't you heard a word that I've been saying? Each and every one of them. I do not want my little boy growing up the child of international globe-trotting jewel thieves. <laughs> yeah, I like that. International globe-trotting jewel thieves. Sounds kind of glamorous. Well, it isn't. It's very tacky. It's very lucrative. Well, you know what? We may just get caught. Despite your bravado, we might actually get caught. And I don't want that to happen because then they'll take Cooper away and he'll be the ward of the state. Never happened. Oh, you know, you, you cannot guarantee that, and I'm not taking the risk. You know, we've gotten so good at what we do, Jenna, that we've almost eliminated the risk. We are the best. We are nothing more than common criminals. Well, you know, there's about a hundred police departments in about a dozen countries that would argue that we're not common. It's not just the life that we lead. I, I want something for Coop that I never had. I want him to have a loving, secure family. With Buzz Cooper. Yes, with Buzz. Our son is better off with us. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. He wouldn't be. He'll have all the advantages, the best private schools that money can buy. Jeffrey, it's not about the money. It's about the type of man I would like my son to grow up to be. So in other words, not like me. No, not in other words, in exactly those words. Now, Buzz may not have two dimes to rub together, but he's he has, a loser. He's got everything my son needs. Oh, you want Coop to learn how to sling Greek hash? You are not his father, you're not his mentor, and I gotta tell you something, I would prefer to rot in jail in the middle of Marrakesh than to have you stay around my son for another second. Do I make myself clear on this? <laughs> I hear you, Jenna. Good, good. So you're gonna take me as I am. This is a take-it-or-leave-it deal, all right? And if you get any ideas about threatening to hurt Buzz, you can forget it. Because, see, I don't put anyone, not even Buzz, before my own son. Who is that man? I don't know, but whoever he is, Annie sure doesn't want to see him. She looks like she's seen a ghost. You should have taken the stand, Chrissy. Your testimony could be superfluous. Stop it. I mean it. Dad, I took the stand for myself, nobody else. And I hope it pays off, Chrissy, but it's not looking very good right you now, You know what? Is it? I'm going to say this one last time. My marriage and my testimony are my problems. This is from What am I missing? Dr. Levine. <clears throat> Who's that? He's an OBGYN from Lakeville. He uh, treated Annie, apparently. And nobody knew that? Seems like she's been lying about everything. Mm. I had such high hopes for her. I know. I did, too. What's going on, Annie? I don't, I don't know. I, I think I don't you know. do. I think you know exactly what's going on. 
tell me. Josh, he, he turned on me. Yes, I can see that. But, but you, well, yeah, but please, just, just be here for me. Just sit right there for me, okay? Of course. And did I not tell you that I did not want my courtroom turned into a circus? You did, yeah. On more than one occasion, isn't that right, Mr. Williams? Yes, it is. Well, then how do you explain this? I can't, Your Honor. I have no idea what's going on. Maybe Mr. Williams can enlighten us. Like I said, this is the witness we spoke of before Mr. Marley began his summation. Really? Well, I remain unenlightened. Obviously, I'd like to interview this witness. Not on your life, Mr. Williams. This court is not going to cater to your whims. This is no whim, believe this me. This is pure theatrics. This witness is vital to our case. He's at the very core of it. Oh, at the uh, very core of your case. Yeah, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the interest of justice. Go, I'm... don't give me the old interest of justice plea, please. Look, I'm pleading with you. Allow me to put the doctor on the stand. If what this witness has to say is not relevant to your case... It is, I promise you. Well, you better promise Mr. Marvin the ball is in his court. Ross, you don't want to convict an innocent person. You want truth as much as I do. Let me reopen the defense. No objection, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to interrupt Mr. Marner's summation so that we can hear from one more witness for the defense. Mr. Williams? The defense calls Dr. Stephen Levine to the stand. That's it, huh? Huh? No more talk? End of discussion? There wasn't any discussion. You were just pumping me for information. It was like good cop, bad cop, and you were playing both parts. No, I wasn't. I want you to be happy. What's wrong with that? I'm fine. End of discussion, okay? Okay. Okay. So, if we can't talk about a... What's her name? Can we at least talk about you and Coop? Yeah, I could talk about him all day. You got the time? He's a good kid. He's a great kid. Raised right. That's obvious. Yeah. He's polite. He listens. He likes to talk, too. He talks a lot. Mostly about trucks. Yeah. Heavy haulers. Big ones. Yeah. Where do you think he gets that from? I don't know. Where do you think he gets it from? Well, I mean, that doesn't always come from the father, you know. Well, sorry to be politically incorrect, but that particular truck gene does come from yours truly. Okay, but he has he has other non-truck genes, too. You know, he's, he's affectionate, and he's sweet, and he's very loving. Look, if you're going where I think you're going, don't. All I'm saying is, when a parent loves a child the way that Coop's parents obviously love him, the child blossoms, he gains so much, and you know what else? I'm afraid to ask. Kids have this amazing, uncanny ability to spot phonies. Even when the phonies are blood relatives. Did you know that? You're all over the place with this. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm coming to the point. I hope so. When I was on the force, we would see these kids. We'd look at them, and they just knew that their parents weren't on the up and up. And it would break our hearts. It would break my heart to look at this kid, looking at his parents, begging them to do the right thing. Do you mention something about a point? The point is, I never saw that with Coop. I never saw that with your son, that needy thing. Don't you think that's funny? Oh, that's a knee slapper. Wait, where are you going? I have an appointment with my son in a park, okay? Was it something I said? No, no. No, it's just, you're acting like your old man. Uh, Dr. Levine, uh, what is your specialty? Obstetrics and gynecology. Have you ever treated a Mrs. Annie Lewis? Not to my knowledge, no. There's a woman in this courtroom. Uh, would the court please instruct Mrs. Lewis to rise? Mrs. Lewis, will you stand up, please? Mrs. Lewis?
Dr. Levine, have you ever treated that woman right there? Uh, Mrs. Johnson, uh, yes. She told you her name was Johnson? Uh, that's correct. Let the record show that the witness identified Mrs. Lewis as Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Lewis, you may sit down. Now, Dr. Levine, could you please tell the court when Mrs. Lewis, alias Mrs. Johnson, came to your office? Uh, earlier this year, at the end of uh, April. And why did she come to your office? Uh, Mrs. Johnson came, uh, Lewis, uh, came to my office because she said she was visiting here from out of town. Uh, she had an obstetrical emergency. And what was the nature of her obstetrical emergency? Uh, we're getting into an area I'm not comfortable with, Your Honor. Doctor-patient confidentiality, Mr. I apologize, Doctor. Let me rephrase the question. There are two, there are two counts against Rita Shane in this case. One is the attempted murder of Mrs. Lewis personally. The other charge is the murder of Mrs. Lewis's unborn fetus. Do you see any problems with these charges? Objection, Your Honor. The doctor is qualified as a medical witness, but he has no knowledge of the legal aspects of this case. Your Honor, I'm simply asking the witness if it's possible that the fall down the stairs could have killed the Lewis baby. Do you have any problem with that wording, Mr. Murner? Well, we've already heard from the doctor in the emergency room, and it was established that the fall could indeed have been caused the death of the fetus. Well, now we have an opportunity to hear the opinion of a doctor who saw Mrs. Lewis before the fall. Overrule. Dr. Levine, is it possible that that fall down the stairs on May the 1st caused the death of that baby? No, it is not. And why are you so absolutely certain? The fall couldn't have caused the death because the fetus was already dead. Order, please. Order. We will continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Dr. Levine, did you tell Mrs. Lewis uh, or, or Mrs. Johnson that her fetus was non-viable? Uh, yes, I did. Do you remember the words you used, sir? I believe I said, I'm sorry your baby is dead. And what did Mrs. Lewis say, if you recall? Uh, well, she was upset, of course. Uh, she said something like, so, it's over. Thank you, doctor. No further questions. What did I tell you? Your testimony was completely unnecessary. Daddy, stop it. Oh. It was, Chrissy. I don't expect you to understand, but I have no regrets testifying. None. It's one thing to lie to the court, to Reva and to Josh, Annie, but it's another thing to lie to me. Ellen. After all I have helped you through, the problems I have helped you handle... Listen, I know you're you almost upset. almost killed me by smashing a vase No, no. Look, I covered for you then, and all of that has been for nothing. What if they'd asked Dr. Levine about your husband, Mr. Johnson? Oh, no, I can explain. No, and I don't want to hear any more Listen, of your lies. Listen, I can explain everything to everybody. You know what? I don't want to hear a word of it. Not one word. Mr. Marler, Mr. Williams, up here, please. Do you intend to examine this witness, Mr. Marler? No, I do not, Your Honor. You may step down, Dr. Levine. Thank you. once and for all and dismiss the charges against my client. Frankly, I'm inclined to share your point of view, Counselor. Ross, you have to put me back on the stand again. What? Please, I have to explain. Please, I need to testify again. It's Harley. I don't know what's going on, but it's really bad. A a about what? It's, it's Buzz and, and Coop. I'm so worried. What about Buzz and Coop? I've never seen him like this, Jenna. I'm afraid. 
Well, no, wait, wait, Harley, just, just, I'm not understanding you. Just tell me what's happened, but tell me slowly. Well, um, I was talking to him before, and, and he was, he was just acting so strangely. How? I don't know how. I don't know how to explain it. Well, get a grip and tell me what happened. Well, I was talking to you before. It's not so much what happened. It's, it's what he said. Well, he, I mean, he was being quiet. He was being quiet in Jenna. It was almost like he was numb. And he, he kept telling me to butt out of his life and butt out of his problems. I think that's very good advice. Do it. I can't. I can't because, you see, I, I thought that everything was okay. I, I thought that everything was going to be okay, but he was going to take Coop to the park and then, and then and he got locked in. Buzz? Yes! Where is he, where is he locked himself in? He's locked in the storage pantry in the, in the old freezer. In the freezer? Yes, he's in the freezer with Coop. He's got Coop in the freezer? Yes, the poor little guy is screaming his head off. I don't want to make things worse. He's, he's screaming? Coop is screaming? I, yes, yes. I was going to call Frank at the police station. Do you think I should no, call? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll be right there. Yes, hurry, hurry. Tell Coop that Mummy's on her way, all right? Hi ho, hi ho. It's to the park we go. <sighs> Any problems? No, not a one. <laughs> Have a good time. Come on, little fella. you're going, Jenna? I have to go out for a while. I'll be back later. Oh, well, that's not an answer. Yeah, I don't have time for this, Jeffrey. Make time. All right. Buzz is having a little problem with Coop at the diner, and I have to go and straighten it out. <laughs> the truth at last. Okay, I've got to go. Uh, and you're in my way. Well, I thought maybe I'll go with you. No, I don't think you will. I'd like to do this alone. But do you think I'm going to want you to shadow me for the rest of my life? Jenna, I just want you to want me to be with you. That's all. That's just not gonna happen. Not in my lifetime, not in yours. In time, you'll change your mind. You'll miss me, you'll miss being in my arms. No, never. I'm never gonna be in your arms again. I can swear to that. Excuse me. You know, I'm getting very tired of you walking away from me. Very tired of it. Well, I guess that's just too bad, isn't it? Because you can have me where you want me. But you can't have my heart. No, darling. I'll have that, too. One of these days, I'll have all of you again. Excuse me. Sit down. Please, I have to. Quiet. Don't make this any worse. I have to work. explain, please. No, you do as I say. I need to defend myself. Reva is the defendant. I would like to keep it that way. The doctor said all these horrible things about me. Yes, indeed, he did. I have to tell my side of the story. You cannot refute the testimony no, of a physician. No, I can't. Please, let no, me explain. Annie, no. Please, Ross, put me up on the stand. You will not regret it. I promise you. Please, I need to tell my side of the story. You stay right here. This is going to be over soon. Your Honor. If I'm not mistaken, I think our district attorney has something on his mind. Your Honor, may I have a word with my esteemed colleague? You're looking for a favor, Ross. I gave you all kinds of leeway with Dr. Levine. All kinds is pretty sweeping, Counselor. Now, I need a little leeway in return. Reciprocity, Griff. How little are we talking about? Look, a woman's name has been slandered. She wants to defend herself. Doesn't she deserve a fair hearing? Excuse me, Counselor, are you suggesting that this court has not been fair? No, Your Honor, but in light of this new evidence, I would like to reiterate the truth as we see it in this case. We just heard that from Dr. Levine. If that wasn't compelling evidence, I don't know what is. Your Honor, if we dismiss the case now, there's always going to be doubt. Ross, you can't still believe Annie now, not at this point. Griffin, trust me. Just let me put Mrs. Lewis on the stand. That's all I'm asking you. No objections, Your Honor. Thank you. May I call? Oh, very well, but get it over with. I want this case concluded today. It will be, Your Honor. The state recalls Annie Dutton Lewis to the stand. Harley, where's Coop? Is he still in there? 
You got here in record time, well, Jenna. I don't hear him crying. No. Did Buzz get them out? Calm down. I don't want you getting all Calm upset. down. You called me and told me that my son is locked in a freezer. It's, it's not a freezer. It's broken, and things have gotten pretty quiet in there. What's that supposed to mean, pretty quiet? Well, I think he's telling Cooper's story. Well, I, d I, I don't get what's going on here. You called me. You were panicked on the phone. I was panicked, but things have they've really settled down. Well, how? How do you know they've settled down? Look, while you're here, could you answer a couple of questions? No, 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 no. You story? answer my question. What do you mean things have settled down? I, I, I think I, I just haven't heard anything. That's all. Listen, could you answer a couple of questions for me? Like, why are you leaving the man that you love and the child that you love to go bebopping around the world with another guy? Why are you I, doing I, I that? I don't have to answer anything to you. No. See, as far as I can see, this is my business. I mean, I'd leave it alone. Except that my father and my now brother, well, as far as I can see, they are my business. So I want to know. I, I don't know what you're getting at here, so it's best that I just ignore it and go... No, no, wait, Jenna, 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 Jenna. If, 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 if you go in there, if Dad knows that I called you, he's going to have my head. I hardly see that that's my problem. Can't we just stay out here and, and talk a little bit longer? No, we cannot. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna, please, just let him calm down. Harley, a bit more. no. I want to see my son. I want to see him now. Okay. Whatever you want. Thank you. Oh, what a pretty day in the park it is. Isn't it? It's a pretty day. You got everything here. Look, you got trees, and you got flowers, and you got squirrels, and you got birds. And you got everything to make a person happy. What do you think? Oop. You miss your mom, huh? A lot. Well, I miss her, too. I love her something terrible. But I can't let on, because self-pity is so unbecoming in a man my age, you know? But you and I, we're gonna be great together, aren't we? You're gonna become center fielder for the Cubs, aren't you? And then you're gonna support your dad. And when you win the MVP, you're gonna thank me on television, aren't you? Aren't you? And it'll be Buzzman and Coop. Coop the Loop. Or Coop the Scoop. Or Coop the... <laughs> you don't want to go there, do you? Hi. Mrs. Popoff! Hi! Hi. Oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, and little Henry, you get bigger every time I see you. And more beautiful, if that's possible. <laughs> I haven't seen you for a couple of days. What are you doing? A couple of days? I was gone more than a week. What do you, well, what do you see over there? You see something you want to go to? Oh, you want to go over there? in the sandbox. Oh, over there. Look at him. He's going. Yeah. Hey, you. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait, wait. Hey, you need your instruments here. You're going to go prospecting. You need your... Uh... There you are. Go. Uh... Oh, he's a... Hey, if you hit the mother load, you have to share half with me. <laughs> he's a real boy. Yeah, he, that he is. Yeah. So, so, where were you for a whole week? San Antonio. Your daughter. Mm -hmm. Your daughter. And my grandchildren. And my grandchildren. Ah, <laughs> uh, by the way, they have chili. Oh, I don't, I don't want to hear about oh, it. Oh, it's I... almost as good as yours. Really? Not as, but almost. Well, it doesn't have the Greek influence that I give it, you know. <laughs> That's what was me. Yeah. So, what did your grandchildren think? Was happy to see you? Sad to see you go? Not really. Um, I, I, I hope they don't get sick of me. What do you mean? Well, they come into Springfield. They're going to spend the summer with me. They are? Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> it wouldn't have been so great if I hadn't found somebody to help me look after them. Um, have you ever talked with a Mrs. Rodriguez? A wonderful woman. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. She's not a regular, but she comes into the diner quite often. Oh, she sits at the end of the counter, doesn't she? She has uh, tea with lemon and white toast. That's her. That's Mrs. Rodriguez. Yes, sir. yes, yes. So she's going to help you with the kids? Yeah, she used to be a teacher. Uh, preschool, uh, kindergarten. Wow. But I can't pay her very much. Well, I tell you what. I'll double whatever it is if you'll help out with Coop. Oh, of course we it? will. My yeah. grandchildren would be thrilled to, to, to be with another child. It'll hey. be so much fun for them. Coop, we got good news for you, baby. <laughs> we'll go to the, the zoo and the lake oh. and the park. Excuse and... me. I got him. Sorry. <sighs> Hello? No, I haven't seen Jenna. At the diners? Oh, Harley called her. What do you want? 
I'll be right over. I have to ask you a big favor. Oh, you I'll have business. Go. Don't worry about it, Henry. I would be happy to watch after you. That won't be long. Take as much time as you need. Look how nicely he's playing. It won't be any trouble at all. You're an angel. You know that you're an angel. I'll be back as fast as I can. Come in. This had better be good. I don't consider it good. I consider it important. It's regarding Coop. What about Coop? Well, Jenna informs me you're under the impression he's going to stay here with you in Springfield. Yes, my son is going to stay with me. You and Jenna can do whatever the hell you want, but the boy stays with, right here with me. Let's be rational about this. This is about as rational as I plan on getting. The boy is better off with his mother. He stays. And with the man he recognizes as his father. You're wasting your breath. Just wait a second now. No, damn it. The boy is going to stay with me. My son is going to stay with me. You go wherever the hell you want with Jenna. Go to the continent. I don't care. But the boy stays right here with me, OK? And oh, that number you used to contact me, do yourself a favor. Lose it, because I never want to hear from you again. Too long, well, really. how are we going to get this unlocked if it's locked from the inside? How do you... Uh, oh, look, there it goes. Now it's open. Get, get out of my way. You could have opened it up hours ago. Sorry. Buzz? Coop? They're not in here. Aren't they? Whoops, sorry. What are you going on about? What are you doing, Harley? Have you totally lost your mind? No. No, I just want you to answer one simple question for me, Jenna. I don't, I don't believe this is happening. I don't believe this. Well, you better believe it. Because you're not getting out of here until you answer straightforward why you broke it off with my father. Mrs. Lewis, I'd like to remind you that you're under oath. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Mrs. Lewis, did you hear and understand Dr. Levine's testimony? Yes. Yes, I did. And did you go to see Dr. Levine because of a medical problem? Yes, I did. That's correct. What was the nature of that problem? Well, I was spotting. It, w it wasn't a, a lot. And although I n know that spotting is relatively a common occurrence in pregnancies, I just decided to go to a doctor anyway. In other words, you did what any concerned pregnant woman would do. That's right. I was concerned. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Lewis, about the baby. Uh, see, I, I, I can explain that. Well, please do. When, when Dr. Levine was examining me, I, I was upset. I was a, a wreck, a total wreck. I was crying. You were upset because you were spotting? See, you have to understand. My husband, he, he was leaving me, and my two beautiful stepchildren, they were being torn from my arms, and I was alone. I was with a doctor that I didn't even know. So if he said to me that my baby was dead, I didn't hear him. I swear, I did not hear the words. So you were too distraught to comprehend what Dr. Levine was That's telling. right. That's exactly right. I'm sorry that I made this mess. I truly am sorry, but n nothing compares to the pain I felt when I lost this baby. This baby was a product of my marriage to Josh, no matter what Fran Richkin says. Well, thank you for explaining. Now, Mrs. Lewis, I would like to take you back to the night of the Spalding party. Well, <coughs> Russ, I already stated what happened at the party, but you know, if it helps you, then, uh, then I'll tell you again. It would be very helpful. Go ahead. Yes. Whether it's true that I lost my baby the way Dr. Levine said, that doesn't negate what happened. That Reva Shane pushed me down those stairs. She wanted to hurt me. I am positive of that. I have no doubt in my mind that she wanted to injure me, and she wanted to injure my baby. Mrs. Lewis, I can only imagine how traumatic this has been for you, and you have presented the facts as you see them. You've given us a detailed account of what occurred. You. Well, I'm sorry, should I go back to my seat now? Mr. Marduk? No, Mrs. Lewis. I have one last question for you.
All right, honey. Where the hell is Buzz? And where's Coop? They're fine. They're having a lovely little father-son afternoon. No, you tell me where they are. No, they're fine. They're fine. They went to the park. They took their pails and their shovels. They're probably dug halfway to China. Do you right swear? Now. I swear. They're fine. So. So you made up this whole cockamamie story to bring me down here? Well. I wanted to have a nice, quiet little chat with you, Jenna, and I didn't think I could get your undivided attention elsewhere. I do not know what you are playing at, but I'm not any part of this. I don't think you have a choice. Oh, I think everybody has a choice, okay? If you'll excuse me. It's not gonna open, Jenna. What are you playing at, Holly? You heard me. You open this door for me now. You lied to my father. Let me out of here now, you Holly. You know that it almost killed him killed him when he walked in and saw you and Jeffrey in bed. It broke his heart. Now, you are not getting out of here, Jenna, until you tell me why you did it. And Jenna, I mean the real reason why. Why didn't you just get over it? Charlie Buzz has. Right? And the store has to open. There's got to be an emergency lock somewhere. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. The great Jenna Bradshaw, jewel thief. She can, she can crack any safe. She can break state-of-the-art electronic security equipment, but she can't seem to master a 1946 diner freezer lock. Jenna, this thing's been out of order for years. I promise you, we're not going to freeze to death. I'm not worried about freezing to death. It's bloody hot in here. Well, that's because there's no windows, in case you didn't notice. You know, that is not humorous. How do you plan to get us out of here? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. The door will magically open when I feel like I've got something from you resembling the truth. Using this. Give me that. You're going to have to roll me for it, Jenna. Don't you tempt me. Do you want to fight about this? I, what I want is I want to get out of here, Holly. I want out of here. Now, would you please open the door because it's stiflingly hot in here and I really, I can't take heat. Why did you dump my father, Jenna? Just open the door. I'm not opening that door until you tell me why did you walk away from him. What? what? Wait a minute. You want to talk to me about walking out, huh? You, who walked out on your father's life without even so much as looking back. What did you do? Where you went off to what? Florida and did whatever it is you do down there? Whatever it is I do. <laughs> what? Getting married and settling down, Jen. It's something you obviously know nothing about. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong. Right there. You're very wrong. You want the story, Harley? All right. I'll give you the story. I wanted to reunite with your father. That's absolutely true. While I was away, I had a very romantic vision of what it would be like when we got back together. But you see, when I arrived back in the States, the reality was very, very, very different from my expectations. So you're saying he disappointed you in some way? In every way. I hate to burst your bubble about your wonderful daddy, but you know, he really isn't that perfect. Not as much as we'd like to think he is. No, one of us would like to think, I know my father's not perfect, and I choose to love him anyway. Oh, great, great. Well, I found out that I couldn't, at least not in the way I thought I should. Mm -hmm. Now, Buzz is a decent man. He's a decent man, okay? And I'm sorry that he found out the truth the way he did, walking in on Jeffrey and I doing what okay, we were okay. doing. Okay, okay, I don't need the graphic details, thank you. Fine, fine, but maybe you ought to know this. What Jeffrey and I have together is very special. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I couldn't live without it. I couldn't give it up. And that's how you wound up making passionate love in his hotel room, right? Exactly. It's convincing. You're a very smart crook, Jenna, and a very, a very smart woman. Oh, Harley, what do you mean by that? You're a smart woman, Jenna. You knew that my father would follow you to Jeffrey's if you didn't come right back. And from what I hear, he walked in and caught you in the middle of the act. And you don't strike me as the type of person who'd be so careless that she'd leave the door unlocked. So the way I'm putting this together, you wanted my father to find you. Mrs. Lewis, would you refresh my memory one more time? What was the date on which you lost the baby? I... I... I thought it was May 1st. No. Not the day that you fell down the stairs at the Spaldings, but rather the day you went to see Dr. Levine under an assumed name. The date on which you knew for sure that your baby, conceived by artificial insemination, was dead. This has been Guiding Light.
You rely on the CBS Evening News to get the whole story. We rely on experience. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Experience you can trust.